Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a twirl effect action in Photoshop. Now if you want to just download the action and you're not interested in learning how to create it, the link will be below the video for the action if you want to just download it. I'm not going to charge, it's free of charge, but I wanted to show you how to create the action so if you're, you know, just so you can learn uh, how to increase your workflow productivity in Photoshop. It's a great tool, the action tool and uh, you know this is a great opportunity to show you how it works and also it's a great action to have because the twirl effects a lot of fun and you can always just open up a photo in Photoshop hit that action just to see what it's gonna look like because as you know if you're familiar with this effect if you watched my first video tutorial on the twirl effect you never really know what it's gonna look like because every image produces a different result and what's great about this, you can just hit the button, see what it does, and then if it looks like crap or whatever, you can just move on to another photo and not waste your time hitting all, doing all the different settings. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna open up your image in Photoshop like so, and then what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to open up the Actions panel. So I'm gonna go to Window, and notice here where it says Actions, you can just click that. Now by default, it's over here on my you know workplace, but it might not be there for you. That's why I showed you where it is in there. So now check this out. I created a new folder called Twirl Effect. If you open that up, there's a Twirl Effect number one. I'm going to click that and I'm going to click play. Now watch what this does. Check that out. So now you have the Twirl Effect. And that's basically what it looks like. So that photo rendered into that using my action. Now what's so cool again about this action is because I used a smart filter on my layer zero here where the original image was, I converted it to a smart object. You could now edit any of these options. So I could go in here and change Mezio tint to something else like medium lines for example and click OK and then it'll re-render it and you'll see what that looks like. So that's what that does. And then you could turn off curves if you want to you know, lower that contrast or vibrance, for example. You can lower the saturation and stuff down. You can always edit these after the fact, which is really, really cool. So anyways, let me go back to the beginning here I'm using my history palette and I'm gonna show you how to create this action. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to create a new folder I'm going to call it Twirl Effect number two because I already created one and I don't want to get confused. So now within Twirl Effect number two, I'm going to create a new action. So I'm just going to click this little plus button here and I'm going to call it Twirl Effect number two, like so. And then all you have to do is hit the record button right here and now the action is recording. So this is a, a really powerful tool, guys, and I, I, I hope you get something out of this video because you could use this for so many different things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Image, Image Size, and then I'm going to change it to about 3,000. You could make this whatever you want, but 3,000 by 2,000 is a pretty good start, you know, and most images are in the 3 to 2 format, but that's a not too high resolution for this effect and it'll come out really good so I recommend starting there if you have an older computer you might want to lower that to 2000 or something but that's up to you 3000 is a good place to start so the next thing I'm going to want to do is change this background layer here to a smart object so just right click you can right click on the layer itself or you can click the three bars up here on the top of the layers panel and do convert to smart object. So now the layer is a smart object. So that's good, to, we're good to go. Now we're gonna run through the filter process. So we're gonna go to filter, pixelate, mezzo tint. I'm gonna set it for medium strokes. Click OK. Then I'm gonna go to filter, blur, radial blur. You're gonna leave that on zoom. The amount to 100%, quality of good, seems to work for me, so I'm going to leave it there. Click OK. And then we're going to do that two more times. So we're just going to go up here to Filter, and it's on the top because it's the last filter I used. Or you can hit Shift-Command-F or Shift-Control-F if you're on Windows. I'm using a Macintosh. Click OK. And do it one more time. Filter, Radio Blur. Click OK. And you can see over here on the right-hand side the layers are now like building but within the smart object. So these are all gonna be editable after the fact, which is just awesome. So now we're ready to actually do the twirl effect. So we're gonna to go to filter, distort, twirl. 
Now, this is subjective. You can make this number whatever you want. For this purpose, I'm going to leave it at 100. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to do this twice. So I'm just going to do a negative 100. Click OK. And then I'm going to over here on the right hand side, I'm just going to double click on these two little lines. And that will allow you to change the blending mode. I'm going to change the blending mode to lighten. Click OK. Then I'm going to go to filter. And I'm just going to do the twirl effect again. You can see it's up here on the top, just like before. And this time I'm going to do, instead of negative 100, I'm going to do just positive 100. Click OK. Now I'm going to double click this again over here, the double lines, and change the blending mode to lighten. And there you have it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to give it a little more punch. I'm going to go to Filter, Other, and then I'm going to go to High Pass. And right around 4.5 or so should be good for the resolution that we're using. If you would use a higher resolution image, you're going to want to change this number, but 4.6 is pretty good, so I'm going to click OK. And now you can see the image is all gray, so we're going to need to change the blending mode to Overlay. So you just double click on those lines again, just like we did before, and then click Overlay. And there you have it. So you could then, you know, turn this on and off to see what it's actually doing. And you can see this one just looks a little bit soft. And when you enable the overlay, it just adds a little bit more contrasty punch to the image, which I particularly like. But, you know, this is what's so cool about this is it's editable. You can delete or undo these at any time. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new curves layer. So I'm going to go down here to the black and white cookie icon, and I'm going to click Curves. And that's going to add a new curves layer on top. Then under the presets, I'm going to go to Medium Contrast. That usually works pretty good. Then I'm going to create another one, and I'm going to go to Vibrance. And this will add some Vibrance. I'm going to jack that up a little bit, jack up the saturation a little bit, and that will do. Then I'm going to go back to my Actions panel here, and I'm going to click Stop. Now here is the entire action. You can see it recorded each step that I did. So the one step that I recorded that I don't want is the hide filter effect and show filter effect because I turned the high pass on and off and it actually recorded that. So I can actually just click right here and drag that out of there like so. So these actions are actually editable as well as you just saw. So not really a big deal. Now, if you didn't turn your high pass on and off, which you obviously really don't need to be doing when you're recording the action, you can then edit it here after the fact. So that's the reason I did that. I wanted to show you that you have the ability to do that. Because if you make a mistake while you're recording your action, you can a lot of times just fix it in here by removing something, for example, or you can just start over and record the action again. So let's see if this works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my history palette and I'm going to go back to the default image. Now I'm back to where it started. I'm going to go back to the Actions panel. And now I'm in here with Twirl Effect 2. This is the one we just created. And I'm going to click Play, and let's see what happens. There you go. So you can see, it works. And that's how you create an action in Photoshop. And in particular, the Twirl Effect action. Now again, you could then go in here and manipulate any of these. So if I go into Twirl Effect, if I double click it, I can make this negative 50, and that'll alter it like so. And then you can do the other one, positive 50. I'm just double clicking on the word Twirl, and then I can go in here, and this is the other one. You want to make it the same, so they, they both want to be 50. So this is what 50 looks like versus 100. You know what I'm saying? So you might like this effect better. And that's what's cool about the doing it this way with the smart filters. You could always go in here and edit it. So let's see what 150 looks like. I'll do the other one. It's going to be negative 150. And that's what 150 looks like. So you can see you can get drastically different results. And that's what's you know just so fun about the uh, twirl effect. All right, so let's see what the twirl effect does on this photo. Click our action here. Click play. Pretty interesting. Let's try it on another photo. So this might not give the best result, but like I said, you never know what's going to happen with these things. So, all right, let's try it on this one and see what happens. I'm just going to click play. Ooh, that one turned out pretty cool. I like that one. Nice. 
Yeah, so like I said, you never know how this is gonna work out with the twirl effect, so it's just fun. So just try it on like whatever, random photos in here. You're gonna get some cool results and uh, this action will really help you out. So if you downloaded the action and you need to install the action, here's how you do that. You would click on this three bar thing here and then you would go to load actions. And then you would navigate to wherever you have that action. Now it's this is the default actions folder inside Photoshop. It's kind of hard to find this. It's easy to it's easy to just search for the actions folder in order to find this because it's really deep. But if you download the file, you know, it might be in your downloads or whatever. But basically what you would do is you would just load whatever the action is. You would put it in a folder where you want it to store it and then you would just click open like this for example and then now notice up here on my panel I now have the special effects action with the twirl effect in there. So that's how you would go about loading an action. Again if you guys have questions be sure to ask below in the comments area and I will be happy to try and help. So I hope you guys have a great day and I will catch up with you next time. Alright take care.